new life. Good morning to you. I hope that your rest was sweet and that your day is beginning very well. Yesterday we talked about worship. I offered three suggestions to you for your consideration when it comes to enhancing your personal worship experience. We defined worship as the direction of our devotion to God. I gave three recommendations. One was practicing prayer as a conversation with God as with a friend. Number two, having a daily Bible reading plan. And number three, having a specific subject as it pertains to God that you are studying. Today I want to talk a little bit more about prayer. P-R-A-Y-E-R. And not just about the practice of prayer, but about the one to whom we pray. What I have learned is that at times we can really be, if we're honest, very concerned about what it is we are praying or how we are going about prayer. Maybe the time of day in which we are praying, the words that we are using, the order of words, or the content and subject matter of our prayers. Hey, all important and worthy of exploration and consideration. But today, I simply want to lift up to you the one to whom we pray. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, with prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is one of the most powerful passages summarizing the effect of prayer. We pray to a God who gives peace. We pray to a God who gives peace. One of my favorite books is Steps to Christ by Ellen G. White. And in that book, I have a favorite chapter called The Privilege of Prayer. And in that chapter, there are two pages that I love to read over and over again. Now, to be clear, the entire chapter and the entire book is a powerful book. You can read it in one day. But pages 99 and 100 have some of the most beautiful, descriptive words concerning the one to whom we pray. I just want to share one of those lines Speaking of God, the one to whom we pray, the God of peace, it talks about us being able to tell God anything because we cannot burden him and we cannot weary him. And here's the line, because he holds up worlds. Now, let's just talk about this world and all of the things going on in this world And yet that old song is still true. He holds the whole world in his hands. And if that is true, my friend, hear me today. He has your world in his hand as well. What's life like right now in your world? Well, you and I are actually kind of standing on common ground, aren't we? We are in a world filled with transition. And transitions come with a lot of moving parts. That's actually embedded in the very definition of transition. It has this picture of components of your life moving from one way to another way, from one location to another location, from one system of normality and familiarity to a completely different system which comes with unfamiliarity and abnormality. Our worlds include transition. And yet, at the same time, our worlds also include some level of stability. Some things have not changed. And on one hand, that may be a good thing. But on another hand, that is what is the bane of your existence. That something that you do want to change continues to remain stable. What else is going on in your world? Make a list of those things. You can put that question at the top. What's going on in my world? I'm familiar with what's going on in the world, but what about my world? What about my ecosystem, my 
habitat, my home, my relationships, what's going on. And whatever you write down, here's what I want you to know. You can pray about those things to God because God is interested in holding up your world. I'm learning this on a personal level. I'm learning to incorporate more of the real estate of my world in my personal prayers because God is loving enough, big enough, kind enough. And here is the word interested enough. I don't remember which message it was, and often I am doubly blessed, triply blessed, one in the preparation of a specific message, and then in the presentation of a message, and then in reflecting on that message, oftentimes in conversation with the person who might have been particularly moved and is kind enough to say, this is what was meaningful to me from today's message. Well, in one particular message, and there was a segment about prayer, the Lord gave me these words, and, and it has ministered to me since, that God is intimately interested in the affairs of our lives. Can I say that one more time? And I'll admit, I'm saying it for you, but I'm also saying it for me. Whatever your world is like right now, Hear me today. God is intimately interested in the affairs of your world. God is not a distant God who barely catches the subject matter of your prayer. He does not have the call waiting sound on for you to hear. He's not wanting you to go through a lot of bureaucratic red tape in order to get his attention God is intimately interested in the affairs of your world. That's the God to whom you pray. So, as you are practicing prayer, yes, be intentional about what it is you are talking about and sharing. Yes, be intentional about including prayer in your daily practice of personal worship. Yes, pray for other people. Yes, those that you don't even like or those that don't like you. But on top of all that, remember the God to whom you pray. He loves to hear your voice. He is interested, intimately interested in the affairs of your world. And if he has the entire world in his hands, then I want you to know, my friend, he has your world in his hands, too. I don't know about you, there's no better hand to entrust our world to than in the hand of the one who calls himself our God and calls us his children and calls us not to worry, but as we pray, we can trust in him. I'll talk to you soon.